Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. On my Twitter account, a few people have sent me private messages at Gambler's Advisor on Twitter. Uh, they say, Dwyer, are you serious? in picking Alexander Povetkin to beat heavyweight champion Vladimir Klitschko? Get real, right? Of course, some people tell me I'm crazy and stuff like that. Fair enough. Fair enough. But just understand that sometimes you have to swim against the tide. Sometimes public opinion is wrong, and I think it's wrong on this fight. Right? I do like Alexander Povetkin to upset Vladimir Klitschko. In fact, I'm privately expecting the KO in the fight, right? The bet I like is Povetkin, and he's greater than a 4-1 to underdog to win the fight, hedged with Klitschko by KO. And understand, the KO side of the prop, Klitschko so overvalued to me that Klitschko by KO is a minus 200. But because you're getting the plus, the greater than plus 400 on the other side of the bet, that hedge is viable. Now understand, though, that the hedge leaves a huge hole. And that hole is Vladimir Klitschko by decision. And let's get real. Vladimir Klitschko has won by decision many times in his career, including decisions over people like David Hay and Marius Walk. So... What I'm telling you is I'm expecting fireworks. I'm expecting Alexander Povetkin, who's not fighting the champ. He is a champion. This is a unification match, folks. He's unbeaten. He has a gold medal just like Vladimir Klitschko does. I'm expecting Alexander Povetkin in the fight of his life to come in with the mindset that the other man has a share of his belt and to push the issue. I'm not expecting a capitulation. I'm expecting a fighter who realizes this is his moment, who understands that whatever the hype is going into this fight, whatever the published lines are going into this fight, he's the better athlete in the fight. He has the faster feet in the fight. And if he can get by Vladimir Klitschko's jab, he's going to find a guy who's not the fighter he is and who also is a bit chinny, right? The model for this fight, in my opinion, and it's a different weight class, is Kelly Pavlik against Sergio Martinez, right? Let's get outside the box. Let's cross the street from the general public, right? I know this video is going to sound crazy, but I'm just telling you an honest take before the fight. In my opinion, the problem with the Emmanuel Stewart fight style, right? And we're talking about the Vladimir Klitschko fight style. You can extrapolate to other Emmanuel Stewart disciple um, discipled fighters like um, Adonis Stevenson. But the problem with the style where you come in at a side profile, you're shooting a jab, you have your power hand cocked, you're hunting down your opponent, your volume is predominantly jab based, right? In other words, the way you get volume is you hit the guy with your jab. You're not throwing too many right hands. This right hand is really a power punch that you're trying to set up during the fight. Occasionally you come in with a left hook, right? But you're predominantly, you know, coming in behind a jab, right? The problem with that fight style is that when that fighter goes up against 
a fighter with superior foot speed. Think Sergio Martinez against Kelly Pavlik. Think Bernard Hopkins against Kelly Pavlik. Right? Kelly Pavlik didn't work with Emmanuel Stewart, but fought really in Emmanuel Stewart style. When that fighter goes up against a fighter with superior foot speed who can dodge the jab, in my opinion, a big part of that fighter's game is neutralized, right? The fighter has to then go to plan B, right? If a Kelly Pavlik cannot land his jab, and if he cannot make adjustments to some plan B, then you end up with the Bernard Hopkins Kelly Pavlik fight. Right, where a guy is moving around the ring, is avoiding the jab, is jumping in with counters and combinations, and Kelly Pavlik unable to do anything about it. Now, we're talking about heavyweights, not light heavies or middleweights. In the heavyweight division, things get accelerated. The punches are heavier. They're more concussive. Right, so some fights style-wise that would go the distance at lighter weights don't go the distance at heavyweight, right? You add in the fact that, in my opinion, and it's controversial, Vladimir Klitschko is not really a natural fighter. By that I mean he's a guy who follows scripts. He's a soldier. That's a different personality type. Then his brother, Vitaly, who in my opinion is a superior heavyweight, who actually in the ring is making adjustments, right? Is in the ring, on the fly, figuring out the angles, making adjustments and changing his fight style. That's not Vladimir Klitschko. The Vladimir Klitschko I know is the person who, if you override his primary strategy, right, if you can literally have him miss you with his jab, duck under it, get inside, and start throwing hooks, I don't believe Vladimir Klitschko knows what to do, right? I know the Corey Sanders fight predates Emmanuel Stewart. Okay, fair enough. But when Corey Sanders gets inside its virgin territory, right, Vladimir Klitschko doesn't know what to do with a two-handed attack once a guy has gotten past his jab. Let me also say, too, there's a big difference between Vladimir Klitschko and Adonis Stevenson. <clears throat> You saw Stevenson against DeForest Cloud, and I'm talking about the light heavyweight champion. Both of them are Emmanuel Stewart disciples, right? Stevenson's now working with Stewart protege, Sugar Hill, a rising talent as a trainer in the business. But you notice that Stevenson banked a lot of body shots. Right, Stevenson focused on Tavares Cloud's body. The idea was, if Cloud's going to protect himself up top, I'm going to take away his legs. I'm going to throw so many body shots that this guy is going to wilt in the middle of the fight. Right, Stevenson, huge puncher. One of the hardest punchers in the sport. Right, huge puncher. <clears throat> Understood that if he couldn't land his punches up top, he had to bank body shots. Vladimir Klitschko doesn't go to the body, folks. He has the same problem Ali did. I know I'm talking about popular heavyweights. This is the rough part of the internet, right? Vladimir Klitschko rarely, rarely goes to the body. Against a mobile opponent, I don't think he's going to be able to hit Povetkin in the body. Right, so what Povetkin has to do, and understand Povetkin is one of the better athletes in boxing in any weight class. This guy's an outsized 
athlete. I know he's looked winded in fights and stuff like that. But just think about it. Let's go back to the Marco Huck fight. <clears throat> right? He's ducking under Huck's right hand. He's standing there. He's not only bending at the waist. He's literally just ducking under the right hand in the middle of the ring. Right? If he's able to duck under Huck's right hand, I don't see why he can't be too far away from Vladimir Klitschko to get hit with that jab. Then when he gets close and he comes in, duck under the jab, think Mike Tyson, duck under the jab, get inside, and go to work, right? He has the foot speed once he gets inside to not get tied up. I believe Vladimir Klitschko's strategy, if he gets inside, will be the same as the strategy that Muhammad Ali used in the rematch against Joe Fraser. Right? Fraser gets inside, Ali grabs him. Right? Ali leans on the back of his neck. The problem with that is I believe that Povetkin is just too athletic from the waist up. I think Pervetkin understands that when he gets inside, he has a further dodge. He's dodged the jab. He gets inside. He now has to dodge the clinch. Right? He, he has to dodge Klitschko trying to tie him up. I believe he can do that. And if he does that, he's going to have a guy with a weak chin who's on the verge of getting exposed, right? To me, this fight is different than the Hay fight because Hay was outside trying to win by jumping in with shots from the outside. I think this is more of a Mike Tyson fight where Tyson's game was really to get inside, then throw hooks and body shots and uppercuts. Right? It's the home invasion, not the ambush where you hit and run. This is the home invasion. Let's coin a new term. Where you jump in and you stay. You take hostages. Right? That's what I believe is going to happen in this fight. Right? Sergio Martinez, in my opinion, landed many flush shots on Kelly Pavlik when they fought. Many flush shots, right? I'm expecting Provetkin land many flush shots on Vladimir Klitschko. Klitschko typically has a superior foot speed and he's able to just bludgeon guys like Richland Chigayev with jabs, right? He's able to literally keep you outside and, you know, behind his Emmanuel Stewart construct, catch up with you and then demolish you, right? Just understand that that doesn't work if the other guy can avoid the jab, can stay outside, and can time his entry point, right? This fight's ripe for an upset. Vladimir Klitschko isn't much of a combination puncher. He's immensely talented. I'm not here to say he's not immensely talented, but he doesn't throw the combinations of an Ali, right? He doesn't move like an Ali. I'm talking about another guy who relied on a jab to keep you outside. He doesn't move like an Ali. He doesn't have the chin of an Ali. These are the things that you need. If some guy can get inside your construct and then, you know, rough you up. Take a look at Emmanuel Stewart fighters, right? Each fighter has pluses and minuses. Just understand that Thomas Hearns lost twice to Iran Barkley. Go back and look at the Hearns-Marvin Hagler fight, right? Hagler was a guy who could slip a jab and start throwing hooks. Right now, Thomas Hearns was more of a natural fighter than Vladimir Klitschko. When Hagler starts throwing hooks, 
Thomas Hearns responds by throwing hooks and short punches, right? He can shorten his punches at the drop of a hat. I don't believe that's Vladimir Klitschko. In the movie Klitschko, the brothers themselves discuss how the natural fighter in the family is Vitaly Klitschko, right? You bum rush Vitaly Klitschko, he's fighting back just like the guy would in the bar, right? He doesn't need a blueprint before the fight. He can see what you're doing, read and react quickly. That's not Vladimir Klitschko. I believe Vladimir Klitschko is the guy who is gifted in boxing and he's following blueprints, right? And I believe that if you disprove his blueprint, I'm not sure how quickly he can switch to plan B and plan C. That first Tony Thompson fight, and I understand what happened at the end of the fight, and I understand the Tony Thompson rematch, but that first Tony Thompson fight, go back and look at the early rounds, right? Vladimir Klitschko doesn't make any adjustments for several rounds while Tony Thompson is dodging his jab. It's so bad that his trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, who's alive at the time, is pleading with him in the corner to do something different. Right? You know, um, I believe that Vladimir Klitschko is a creature of habit. I think he's going to be dealing with a different dynamic. A guy literally bouncing around who refuses to get close enough to him unless it's a you know an invasion who refuses to get close enough to him to get hit with the jab I believe just like Kelly Pavlik found out when he couldn't land the jab on either Martinez or Hopkins I believe Vladimir Klitschko is gonna soon realize that he's dealing with a guy with superior foot speed and a vertical game right um, Povetkin can come in low Right? I believe Vladimir Klitschko is going to figure out he can't hit him to the body and he can't land the jab. So the question is, what happens when he opens up like he did in the late rounds of the, uh, well, the last few rounds of the Tony Thompson rematch? If he opens up and he's off script, I think this is a guy who won't be able to improvise fast enough to beat Alexander Povetkin. So let's throw caution to the wind here. It's high risk. You know, understand when we're talking about a two to one underdog, that's high risk. This guy's a greater than four to one underdog. But I want you to just consider the possibility that the public has this fight wrong and that Alexander Povetkin is a live dog. If he gets inside, folks, anything is possible. Right? I'll agree. Klitschko has one punch knockout power. Klitschko lands flush, he wins by KO. You know what? If he wins by KO, great. That's my hedge. Right? But if he gets hit flush, I don't think he has the survival skills. If you're living and dying off a jab, you better have foot speed. You better have a chin. You better have a way to deal with the guy if he slips your jab. I'm just not sure. If Vladimir Klitschko has all that, I like the upset. I'm hedging it with Klitschko by knockout. It'll be painful for me if Klitschko wins this by decision, but that's the high risk I'm willing to take on this one. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.